Uh, hello everyone and welcome to my new Let's Play I'm going to try out here. Uh, a little different than you might be used to with my Nancy Drew Let's Plays, but I am going to attempt, anyway, to do a Let's Play of Indiana Jones and the Infirm Machine. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, this is a third person platforming action game very similar in the same vein as Tomb Raider. Uh, it came out for the PC all the way back in 1999, so it is almost 20 years old at this point. Uh, and then there was an N64 port, I believe, in 2000, and then a Game Boy Color port in 2001, but that might as well be an entirely different game. Uh, the N64 version is slightly enhanced. I think it has some better textures and some better music, I think. But other than that, the games are exactly the same. Uh, I'll be playing the PC version, obviously, because I don't have any way to record off of an N64, and I don't have the copy of the game on the N64. So, um, this, in my opinion, it's a game that, uh, again, is very important in my childhood. Um, I consider it an underrated gem. It's not a very well-known game uh, by a lot of people, but uh, in terms of, like, the whole, like, Tomb Raider, like, ironically Indiana Jones style game um, it's incredibly good uh, I would put it over the the early Tomb Raiders for sure um, I like those games as well but this one to me um, the story in it is amazing uh, there's the set pieces and the level design is incredible in this one as well controls are a little stiff and wonky but that's what you can really expect from a platformer in 99 that's this 3d uh, it's still totally playable. It's, uh, it's just a little, a little stiffer than most people would be used to, I guess. Um, it's miles better than the original Tomb Raider games, anyway. Uh, much less stiff than those. Uh, it's a lot more forgiving, I find, than the original Tomb Raiders, for sure. Uh, you don't have to be nearly as precise with your ledge grabs, with your... Um, with your running stuff like that it's it's a lot easier on the player um but yeah like i consider this an underrated gem very good game and uh i was going to say that it could be a little bit difficult to get your hands on this game now because before i um recorded this before i was just having the idea for this uh, the only place to really get it was on ebay or amazon or somewhere like that and they were very expensive because it's a pretty pretty hard to find game nowadays and I know that people were petition petitioning on um, GOG or good old games forever to get this game to finally get carried and lo and behold I checked GOG a couple days ago and they actually put up the game like the first of October this year so it's been there for less than a month so you can totally get this game now it's very easy to get and download uh, it'll run on, I'm assuming, most modern PCs as it's 20 years old, so it doesn't require a whole lot of graphical updates. So yeah, uh, I hope that if you do enjoy this walkthrough, uh, definitely support the game and give it a chance, because it's, it's a really good game and it's really, it's really worthwhile playing through it. Uh, so with that intro, um, let's, let's get to the main game. Okay, uh, let's get the show on the road after that lengthy intro about what this game's about. Uh, I'm sorry about the intro here. It doesn't have sound. I have no idea why. It didn't have sound even when I had the game back in the day on my older computer. It just never worked. I don't know what the problem is, but you're not missing much. It's just music. Uh, so this gives you a little bit of backstory about the game. It takes place two years after the end of World War II, so it's it's just the start of the Cold War between Russia and the States, and that'll provide the backdrop for the rest of the game, I guess. And now off to our first level, Canyonlands. American Southwest, 1947. I think we're somewhere in Utah or Colorado, Time to go to if work. I remember right. I turned on the subtitles, so you should be able to read everything, even if you can't understand it. 
Okay, so this is what the game looks like, and like as you can tell, a uh, little bit dated, but it it's still decent enough for me. Uh, you walk around, it does have tank controls unfortunately, well kind of anyway. Not full tank controls, but it's like Tomb Raider, but a little more lenient. So you got your run button, you got your walk button, and then of course your jump button here. So we're going to start to make our way down. Our object for this level is to get down there to that dig site where that little thing is is sitting there in the dirt. You can kind of see it from here, maybe. Uh, so that's our objective of the game, is, or this level, is to get down to that little piece of whatever it is in the dirt. So ladders, you can climb by pressing jump button as well. Uh, textures, like I said, leave a little bit to be desired, but it's not that bad for a game that's almost 20 years old. Uh, I also should mention that I will be doing the... Uh, I will be finding all the treasures in all the levels, um, so it can serve as a treasure guide as well, I guess. Oh, come on, grab it. So yeah, it's like mo move blocks, it's the same as in the Tomb Raider games. Press the action button and you can either push or pull them. Climb up on top of this guy and you're going to get the first treasure of the level in this little alcohol right here. Uh, treasure Look what I found. can take the uh, shape of there's gold and silver coins, there's gold and silver like little triangular idols, there's gold and silver bars among other things. As, and there's also like colored gems that look like diamonds, but they're different colors. Um, you'll also notice that I'll be quick saving a lot throughout these levels, and that's in case I die or in case of a game breaking bug, because there's going to be a lot of both in this game, unfortunately. I'll try not to die on this level, because it'll be embarrassing, but we'll see. Hmm. That thing looks whippable. So there he gives you your first hint that you can whip something. There's using this a lot throughout the game. You can use it to swing across gaps and to climb up walls like this. Sometimes they can be a little bit hard to spot though, so you just kinda gotta look around. So we jump off there. I don't think there's anything in here. And you're gonna run into your first enemy of the game here, which is just a shitty little snake on the ground. Just shoot it with your revolver. Uh, the revolver, ironically enough, is not good for anything other than shooting pests like that. Don't use it against actual enemies, or you'll be taking a lot more damage than you need to. Go in here and you'll find your second treasure, this little blue gem looking thingy, I guess. It's supposed to be a diamond, I don't know. And then we can head back up onto this block. And make the jump across here. He will automatically grab the ledges too, which is a good thing. You don't have to hold control like you do in the Tomb Raider games, which is really nice. This thing can be a little finicky. There we go. So as soon as you fall in this water, what you're going to want to do is swim to this little ledge and pull yourself out. Don't go down the waterfall. If you do go down the waterfall, there's a way back, but it's going to take a while. So climb out here, go walk up this ladder, and we're going to get that silver bar that you saw in that little brief cutscene there before he fell into a hole. So yeah, if there's ladder pieces beside each other, you can shimmy across like that. You'll be doing that a lot during the game as well. It's uh -huh. a good bar. Uh, there's nothing actually up there. I think going up that way just gives you a way back to uh, the earlier era area before we fell in through this hole. So you don't actually need to go back in there. There's nothing up there for you to find. So now that we have that, we can fall off this waterfall. Uh, before we get out though, there's a couple things we need to grab. There's your fourth treasure, the silver idol down here. And there's also a whole nother space back here. 
swim underneath the waterfall. Uh, notice he has an oxygen meter there in the bottom right. Um, keep an eye on that. If it goes down to zero, your life, which is that circle on the bottom left there, will start depleting incredibly quickly. Like if you're not like a few feet from the surface, you will die. So keep an eye on your air. Uh, if it's getting low, you might want to come up for an air pocket. Fall down this little pit here, What's and this? you'll get treasure number five, which is these gold coins. And then you can crawl up here out of these platforms and back up into this area. Um, there is a bunch of ladders and a bunch of platforms there, but all of that that leads to is that's how you get back up to the area before the waterfall. So if you miss that gold bar for some reason or something back there that you didn't grab, you can use that way to get back up there. It's just a simple couple of jumps up the platform, crawl up the ladder. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. And you can get back up to the area before you jumped into the water. So now we can, oh, that's where the treasure is. Now you can get out here pull yourself out of the water, and we're back to where we were supposed to be. Funny how I didn't spot this before. If this is the prize, I'll lose my grant for sure. Where are the priceless artifacts? The gilded idols? The crowns of kings? So he's just going to complain that his artifacts aren't, aren't worth enough money. Which is a really shitty way to look at archaeology, but whatever, I guess. And you see this helicopter go overhead. News never travels that fast. Better get up there. So now our next objective is to find out where the fuck the helicopter went. But before we do that, you're gonna get into this little passage right here. Mm. You're gonna find your sixth treasure, which is the another diamond kind of looking thing. Uh, the treasure and the treasures in this level are all pretty out in the open. There's none that are really hard to find. You go through this other little pathway, and you'll find treasure number six, which is this other red diamond here. So you're going to crawl up over these few platforms here. Don't jump to that one just yet. Uh, if you run down here, you can hit C to crawl, and you're going to crawl through this little space and get up. And there's another treasure here. What have we here? The gold idol. Idol. Which I, I forget if it's number seven or eight. I don't know. I'll leave annotations, I'm sure, somewhere so you can just skip ahead to find the treasures if you want to. Now you can climb out and turn around. Jump onto this other little platform here. Before we climb up on that one, though, you want to head down to this tree. And you're gonna get these gold coins uh -huh. here. So that'll make treasure number nine, I believe. Crawl up on this little block here. And we're gonna get our first instance of shimmying. You see a little whip there, you can grab it and shimmy across. Very similar to Tomb Raider. People who've played the old Tomb Raider games, this will all be pretty familiar to you. So you're not able to get up on that little thing right there because it's sloped, unfortunately. So here's a quick save here. So what you're going to do is do a run and jump across to this little platform here. And crawl up the ladder. And jump across to this other platform. And now we can crawl up on here. You better get out your revolver, because there's going to be a snake here. Shoot him real fucking quick. There's a bunch of pests like that in the game. The snakes, spiders, lizards, you'll come across scorpions. You'll come across them in the later levels. Crawl up this ladder here to get the final treasure of the level. At least I hope. Look what I found. I hope I didn't miss anything anyway. Crawl down here. A faster way to get down the ladder is you just press the jump button and he'll just drop. 
Just make sure that you're not dropping from a too high a height or he'll take damage or could even die. He's not invincible falling from heights as you may imagine. So here's probably the biggest jump in this entire level. You do a running jump across the canyon to this little thing here. And that's pretty much going to end the level. It's an incredibly short level just meant as a tutorial. And now the game really kicks off with this cutscene here. Oh no. What now? Sophia Hapgood. Hello, Indy. So, yeah, for those of you who don't know, she was a pretty major character in Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. She looks fucking nothing like she looked in Fate of Atlantis, but whatever. Going from 2D to 3D, I guess. There's an iron curtain coming down on Europe, Indy. Yeah. I guess this could be considered read the a sequel to Fate of Atlantis, to even though it has no we references to it whatsoever. Uh, who's we? When I joined during the war, it was the OSS. Now President Truman calls us the Central Intelligence Agency. CIA. You know to these days? Soviet sabotage, atomic secrets. Don't be silly. We've got whole battalions for that. It's my job to worry about more uh, unusual activity. Oh, shit. Such as the dig site on the Euphrates River, south of Baghdad. Babylon. Remember your Bible? That's where mortals raised the Tower of Babel to invade heaven. Well, you know, this does look like the ruins of Itemanunki. The ziggurat often identified with the tower. Very good, Dr. Jones. You're looking at the brainchild of one Gennady Volodnikov of the Leningrad Physics Institute. He thinks there's some truth Look at that bald man. Isn't he a godless communist? He's a Not a speck of hair on his head. In hyperspace. Quirky theoretical stuff. Now, what's a guy like that doing in Babylon? Not sure. All we really know is he thinks the atom bomb is a joke. Then why isn't the world laughing? Indy, suppose the tower housed some deadly force no one else had ever heard of. Something as dangerous as nuclear fission. And the Babylonians tore it down for reasons not discussed in the good book. Exactly. It's an amusing theory. A lot of conclusions see, being jumped to here. My own. You don't think I flew out here from Washington just to relieve your boredom, I hope. Relieve him of digging up his potsherds. Uh, somebody made a mistake. This looks like part of a steam engine, maybe a locomotive from the last century. There's no mistake. We've dated the thing. It's 2,600 years old. Really? Look at that little wheel spin. How'd you find it? Come on, Indy, we're the CIA. And her hair disappears. So he just agrees to go along, I guess, for some reason, despite saying he wouldn't beforehand. Not like he was doing anything out here. He was spending fucking 20 minutes getting down to his, his dig site. Like, that always confused me as to why he wouldn't, like, make a ladder down to that area or something, instead of going all the way around, jumping over chasms and shit. It's like, how did you get to work today? Oh, you know, I took a bus, took, took my car. I jumped across chasms 50 feet high, tried not to die, shot some poisonous snakes, you know. So, yes, we did find 10 treasures. There are 10 treasures in every level. Uh, and when you finish a level, you will get a certain amount of money, depending on how many treasures you found. And the total treasure value is how much you accumulated throughout the entire game, of course. So, once you finish a level, you're going to get to this screen, which is kind of neat. And this scene is actually a store. And so this is your inventory here on the left. And in the middle here are things you can buy. So you can buy first aid kits, which restore half your health. Trauma kits, which restore your full health. Poison kits, um, they stop poison, which is what uh, spiders, scorpions, lizards, and snakes, they poison you and they bite you, and your health is slowly going to go down over time unless you use a poison kit. The secret map, it actually unlocks a bonus level, uh, but you need 2,500 coins to get it. And the thing is, once you buy the secret map, you immediately jump to the bonus level. Like, the very next level is the bonus one. So I usually don't buy it until the end of the game, even though you can buy it by, like, level 4 or 5 if you collect all the treasures in all the levels, so it's pretty easy to buy. And Medicinal Herbs and Medicinal Sprigs, they're exactly the same as First Aid Kit and Trauma Kit. Medicinal Springs is 
a first aid kit and medicinal herbs is the trauma kit. They do exactly the same thing. So you can buy some first aid items. You don't really need it, but if you're feeling if you're feeling like like um, you, like the level's a little bit tough or you're low on health, you can do what you need to do. Uh, I'm just gonna skip everything because I don't really think I need anything for the next level here. And so uh, that was Canyonlands. Uh, good little tutorial level. Not much going on, but just introduces you to the mechanics of the game, and that's about it. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna end this, and we'll see you guys at the next level.